Independent candidates are on track to cause a huge upset come election day. A number of key seats are hanging in the balance, with long-serving parliamentarians at the risk of losing their jobs. Yeah, Aussies hit voting booths this weekend, but millions have already had their say, and that's putting even more pressure on some of the coalition's big names to turn the polls around. Data analyst and economist Alyssa Choi analyses Australian sentiment towards candidates to calculate their chances. Morning to you. OK, let's start with Treasurer Josh Frydenberg's electorate. Koo Yong, can he win this? It looks like it's very close. This is the closest seat that I've been analysing. Koo Yong is literally neck and neck between the independent Monique Ryan and Josh Frydenberg. I'm seeing almost identical engagement, engagement that is both very strong but also attracting very strong emotions, positive and negative. But I would actually tip that we've got Monique Ryan, who's, if I had to call it for tomorrow, she would be winning by a slight chance. And I also assume that she would be helped by Labor and Green preferences. So I would tip uh, the independent... Uh, in Kuyong. Okay, so what have been the key issues that have cha uh, shaped sentiment? For Kuyong, we've seen that, of course, climate change has been a disappointment by the Liberal camp. We've also seen that uh, the messages around uh, integrity and uh, politics and in, in, uh, corruption with federal ICAC has been very strong for the independents. And Monique Ryan has really stepped up in her profile and engagement with the country with the help of having that Sky News debate. Mm. OK, uh, let's go to the New South Wales electorate of Hughes. Could the United Australia Party's Craig Kelly lose his seat? Now, this is a stronger signal. I'm more confident on this one. Craig Kelly is not cutting through. We're seeing the uh, Georgia Steel, the independent, actually having very transformational impact. I'm looking at this stage for momentum. So we've seen a lot of Teal candidates showing great momentum in engagement in the last two weeks. OK, so how many seats are there with strong independent candidates and how much of an impact are they going to have? In, on my count to date, I've looked at five or six key seats and six out of those six are uh, with strong teal independent candidates. Wow. So I am, uh, the data is confirming that we are really in for a teal wave. Um, but, but that's before I look at the wider scope. This week, I'll be focusing on 50 seats around the country. OK, so which other ones? Um, Wentworth, I know, you know, that's a, a, a very high-profile Allegra Spender is, is in that seat, North Sydney. Run us through the ones that you think the independents could get up. So the three key ones that I'm seeing, transformational momentum with teal independent candidates. The first one, Kylie Tink. Uh, in North Sydney, Allegra Spender in Wentworth and Zoe Daniel in Goldstein. So those three have what I call transformational momentum, which means they're going to change the market. OK, so we've got, what, five days to go. Could anything make a major difference to these results in the coming days, uh, especially considering apparently so many people have already voted and, and a lot of people saying they're still undecided? Yeah, this is such an interesting election. We've got people who have already voted in droves. They've checked out of this election. But we still have five days of campaigning. What I've observed is that this election, everybody's hanging on to every new soundbite, every event, every debate. There's a lot of chatter. There's a lot of discourse on the internet. And so I think it will still be down to the last minute. So we'll mm. be looking at this towards the end of the week. Are they really? Because... People tell us they are, they are sick of it. They're sick of hearing from these politicians. It's been a long election campaign and some people have turned off. It, we have seen some strong uh, disillusion because we've got the two major parties for a while they were just bickering. They weren't really sticking to the election issues. I'd like to see that in this final week people are still undecided because at the end of the day it's right. just a trade-off. Okay. Right? Mm. Yeah, what are the big issues that are cutting through? What's your advice to both, both parties? In the last week, you should be focusing on what? Mm. I think in this final week, everyone's already heard what they needed to hear in terms of policy. I think for the last five days, what I'm seeing is a lot of anxiety and fear. I'd like to see that the, uh, both parties start talking about hope and vision, instill positivity. Uh, what does the future mean for us if we were to vote for them? So shift the narr neg narrative from negative to positive. That's what I'd like to see. Oh. Mm.
That could be a big challenge, isn't it? <laughs> They're all so negative. They, yep. I think that's what beats us down, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, but see, Scott Morrison seems to have changed his yes. whole thing in the last few days. Maybe he's been mm. listening to you, Elisa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Fascinating. Uh, all right, uh, head on the sunrise.